Okay, so I'm going to try to get in here really close so you can see what I'm doing. And uh, I'd like to try to not talk too much. I can't let people want to tell, so okay, I'm going to talk. Okay, so um, I usually use, uh, I use this ugly thing just so that I don't care about it dripping on stuff. But I think it's going to be hard to see what I'm doing if I do that. So I do like to use this, which I got for a dollar at Michael's. Oops. It's just a handy thing to lean things on. And sometimes if I have a bale, um, you know, it just it has a little hole where I can set the bale and still work on it flush and stuff. So um, that works out handy. I like to have some rubbing alcohol. And that's what it is. I already told you about the flux. Safe, it's, uh, safe art systems is that is what it's called. Safety flux for copper foil, and I have seen it online. This is eight eight ounces for uh, eight eight bucks. Okay. Also, another one of my favorite tools for soldering is just some uh, wooden, wooden clothespins. And it's not going to heat up like this. This little glass piece is going to heat up. So you can't touch that, and also you don't want to be touching all that flux. The flux you don't want to get it on your hands as much as possible. You don't want to be eating or drinking coffee or anything while you're doing this, and preferably if you can have a fan going or work in a good ventilated area. I have a little, a big fan and a little fan that I like to turn on once the flux starts getting all smoky. Where's that thing? Oh, we'll get to that. Okay, and I have my um, soldering iron here. Right now I just got it at two, but I'm going to move it up to like maybe four just to get it nice and hot. Then as I'm going, I might move it down between three, three and a half, four, um, just depending how I feel. I also like to um, have some jump rings ready to go. I have this little sticky mounting. It's like a 3M sticky thing, and I have, uh, actually I usually have these closed up. With the gold and brass and bronze colored uh, jump rings, they won't grab onto the solder. Silver ones usually seem to not be a problem, but so I like to get them all nice, closed up, really t good and tight. I have special cheapy um, tools, these uh, needle nose pliers, and it's especially good to have one of these bent nose pliers so you can see what you're doing. You know, get this, get your jump rings ready ahead of time. And get them closed up as tight as you can as, so that they're really touching. Um, and then I like to keep them just kind of stuck on here behind it. So I like to have them sticky and ready to go <laughs> because I just get clumsy and I just drop things at the worst possible moment. Okay, so let's go ahead with this. So what I'm going to do, I take a little bit of flex on a, just a cheapy throwaway paintbrush. Some people use Q-tips. And I only paint on as much as I want it nice and sturdy. I don't want it to move around while I'm soldering. Pull a nice big piece out because it's going to melt away and you don't want your hands to get too close. Let's see if you can see. So I try not to touch the solder to the soldering iron. It's getting a little oxidized because it's either not hot enough or, you know, of course it's not melted. Okay, here we go. I like to try to let it drip down, melt it on top, and let it drip down, and really never even touch anything. I try not to actually even touch the, I try not to even touch the piece, the jewelry piece. I just hover above it, and that's my best bet of keeping it from getting bumpy. I try to keep it smooth and round, and if I start actually touching the um, touching the glass or touching the edge is when is the most chance that it's going to start getting bumpy and look like I'm trying to paint on the I don't paint it on because then it starts getting lumpier and lumpier and so I don't know if you can see that it's just kind of hovering and I my hope is that by hovering over it, that it's actually going to flow so much 
that it's going to flow around the edges so that I don't even have to go and do the sides. If I'm lucky, when I flip it over, I was just doing the top, but it's kind of done the edge as well. And it has done this edge. So I like to get enough of a big round bead here that it flows off to the side and I never even have to touch that. It just makes a nice round edge on its own. Because if you try to do an edge here, an edge here, an edge here, then you've got three chances to mess it up. And you've got three seams that you're trying to make smooth. And it's it just kind of flows over the edge naturally. So I hover over it and just kind of hope it pours over the edge. And it's only going to go where you painted that flux. And you got to keep your you got to be careful keep your body out of the way because that's like hot lava. <laughs> and if you get a drip like that, it can easily drip down onto your pant leg and burn right through your clothes. So that's pretty dangerous stuff. That's why you see people like wearing leather um, leather aprons and stuff like that. Looks kind of cute on those um, uh, blacksmith guys. Come on. Okay, so you want to Keep this. Since I'm gonna mess, I'm gonna set this down. I want to make sure that it's not gonna get oxidized. So I want to keep a silver. Get a little dab of that. Make sure it's got some silver on it. Or set it down. Also, it's at four. I want to turn it down a little bit. It's three and a half, so it doesn't burn up while I'm messing around with this. So there's a drip. I'm gonna heat that up and try to drag it along to cover up some spots that I missed. This is really hot, so that's why I'm holding it like this. So that's pretty sloppy. I was talking too much. I'm going to go like this. Get to it. So see how it's kind of like looking wrinkled? That's what you don't want. And th that's just because it's, it's a really thin coat right there. It definitely needs a thicker coat. But it's also kind of oxidized. It's very gray looking. So let's get this Let's get this done. Let's see if I can. I don't know if you could see that. I'm just kind of almost pulling it along. I'm not even really touching anything. I just pulling and then I, I like to put a little dab if there's any on the tip I can put a little dab there and use that little blob to attach my bail that doesn't look bad but you can see some copper showing here so I'm going to need to cover that up I should have a fan going Right. Yeah, some bumps and stuff are not so bad. I mean, it is a handmade item, and that's part of its charm. So I gotta like let not let myself worry about it too much. That people are buying a handmade item, and they don't want it to look like it. You know, came right out of a factory. You know, like it was stamped out of a factory. So people don't mind. In fact, they like it when it. Or, you know, people I know like it when it looks, when it's obviously handmade. So I forget about that when I get to be a, get into a perfectionist frame of mind. Sometimes I forget that that's what people like about it. Okay, that, nobody's going to like that little lump. So let's take care of that. Um... That's why I have all these little pieces of wood kind of thing. Oh, that was easy. 
put all these little wooden sticks and stuff because it's a way to manipulate the piece without getting burned and it's not going to conduct heat. That's why I have so many stuff, things that are wood because they don't conduct the heat. Okay, so getting a little... So I dab it to this flux and then I take this and just make sure it's got some of this on here. Kind of turn it around. It reminds me of mercury or something. It has that same weird strange consistency that balls up and flows in a weird... Okay, so let's take a look at this. That doesn't look bad. So I think I'm going to put the bale on and then maybe clean it up and then maybe smooth those out. It's not bad. I mean, I kind of like it because it looks a little bit like uh, the bark of a tree. The topic of the paper inside is um, is nest building. So I kind of like it. It looks like sticks. I'm going to leave it all bumpy like that. <laughs>